question, but and if you look at it, this is Naidu's uh, fourth term as CM. And as a chief minister, he still behaves like it's his first term. 88 out of the 164 people who won uh, on the alliance are first time MLAs. 17 out of the 25 cabinet ministers in Mr. Naidu's uh, cabinet are first time cabinet ministers. So that's the kind of energy and push with which we, we are here. If you look at it, out of the 175 seats, we, have, we won 164. That's a 92% strike rate. That's the second highest. The mandate is quite clear. It's not just about welfare. It's about creating jobs. It's about creating a vibrant ecosystem. I think for a youngster like me, it reinforced the need for educated people to actually enter politics. It was a very clear mandate with which uh, they did. So all of you in Hyderabad, Bangalore, you know, they were all beneficiaries of Y2K. I believe Andhra and India can all be the beneficiaries of the entire AI revolution. So as an IT electronics minister, my mandate. His vision uh, evolve and you know just the um, the opportunity that you know he is projected ahead of us right for but the country as well. I think uh, one thing that's really interesting we had a chance to talk a little bit last week is uh, you know uh, Lokesh is one of the young leaders in India, right? And, and I think it's that so we have a generational change going on if you think about it uh, and. India needs that kind of energy and vision, and you know it's something that you know he was talking about just walking through every district in the state of Andhra Pradesh, which is just mind-boggling to think about just the length of the state, um, and this kind of shows the breed of new leaders that are coming up. So I think what you're going to hear from him today is not just obviously you know that is actually the Bharat Health, which is human resource development. So KG to PG and skill development is also underneath. So what you'll see uh, in Andhra is outcome-based education, and I'm leaving this from the front. So when Mr. Naidu was talk thinking about portfolios, he said, who can handle education? He said, okay, there's a Stanford MBA, we have a good bakra, now let's give it to him. <laughs> and it's his job now to transform the entire education. Because I truly believe uh, in India, while we have numbers, we don't have the quality. In the department, I have this tussle, and they said, no, no, we have quality, we have done great stuff. Then I said, four years undergrad, you are not able to find a job. But four months of subsequent training, then you will find a job. And this fundamentally wrong, something wrong with education. And two, I believe that government education is a very, very important vertically in society. So we're going to upgrade, we're going to be very research-centric. I was talking to a few of the colleagues here, you know, why, why should we promote India to, you know, American companies or European companies, why can't we create such companies in India? And I think that's what excites us. I think, and it's our time to turn around. And, but for that, we need strong, high quality education, we need that, uh, you know, the startup ecosystem. I think we need to do a lot, lot more. It can't just be about one, two cities. I think India is far. A lot of, uh, I mean, government does play a very important thing. It is school education, it is higher education. We are very passionate about it. I'm personally very passionate about it. So we are now focused on not output, but outcome-based education system. And what uh, I'll offer to all of you here is also our state universities. You know, Andhra universities is in Shaklatan. is one of the, our oldest universities in India. And what you'll see is that in the next five years, we will in every term of his. So when he discussed this entire revolution with the Honorable Prime Minister, Modi ji, he said, let's up, do it in Andhra and you will take it to the nation. So I think everyone is looking at what we are going to do. Everyone is looking at what Andhra will do. Uh, and I think we will have a great model that we can now take it to the nation. You know, Andhra Pradesh, all of you know, is now the new state opposed the bifurcation. Uh, it lends itself to unique opportunities. I mean, crisis is an opportunity. And it lends itself uh, to that opportunity to be uh, manufacturing uh, mobility, to be renewable energy, to be the entire electronics manufacturing, which is China plus one strategy that uh, the world is adopting. To be even things like aqua, defense, petrochem, uh, you know, bioenergy, 
So I'm a big trust area. So as a state, using WhatsApp as a platform on speed and ease of living. And basic government there is how can we make it better? And then I was talking to a lot of big thought leaders here on how can we implement AI in governance and slowly remove the human element, which tends to uh, create rent seeking, uh, you know, inefficiencies in the system. How can we sort of transform the entire sector? I think it's a journey, it's not a guess. Because unlike other states which have capital in the center of their universe, because of historical reasons and geographic reasons, you know, everything is centered. In our case, we are like, let's decentralize, go to every district and transform each and every district. Saying that, we're doing some very interesting projects. One is the skill census, where we want to assess, understand the skills of our citizens, look at micro interventions, how can we improve their skill set, and based on outcomes, and then create next generation workforce, entrepreneurs, thought leaders uh, coming out of uh, the state. Parallelly, I'm doing a project which is, I call it a family scorecard. And the idea is how can I analyze the family from a 360 degree and actually do micro interventions to pull them out of the cycle of poverty. So we call this the 4P, you know, all of you have heard about the 3P, right? Private public partnership. So we are adding people to it. See, all of us are beneficiaries of good education, great exposure, a little bit of luck. And all of us are going to this. Just uh, creating data centers. Look at the entire AI brain. So I keep telling the honorable ministers uh, across states, even national, that India should at least get 100 out of the 300 of them. We are the largest consumers of data. And we will continue to be. The sheer size of a population will drive us there. And it's clear that the next 25 years, two and a half decades, is India's two and a half decades. The demographics are all in our favor. And as politicians, as entrepreneurs, if we don't do it right, then we're going to have huge challenges arising out of our nation. As a government, all of you know, Mr. Naidu, we are doing things. And now what we are working on is how can AI drive governance. We don't know how and what's the right model. So using the entire family scorecard as the model, where again, layer of AI, we can understand uh, how to improve their income levels, how can we pull them out of the cycle of poverty. And that's what makes it very interesting. So we're doing some very interesting stuff in Andhra Pradesh. Uh, and needless to say, this time around, we are very focused on actually grounding things, getting things going. It's just been four months since we came into power. And if you've been following the news, a lot of exciting announcements have already come. More will follow. So we have actually broken our governance down not on years. It's 100 days chunks. First 100 days, second 100 days, third 100 days. What are our priorities as ministries? How are we going to go about it? So whatever I spoke to you about is my India hat.